Hello guys, it's Noah here, and I'm here to give you a little informative video on binders and how to bind and safe binding and what binders are in general. Because I feel like it's a topic that's not widely discussed um, outside of the transgender community, and I feel like it should be um, so that more people understand safe binding and that people are just more informed on trans related things to begin with. So let's get started. The first thing you're probably wondering is Noah, what even is a binder? And I know that what you probably have in your head if you haven't seen a binder before is some sort of um, like, oh my god, what are they called? Corset. Some type of uh, corset type thing that goes around you and it's really tight and it's really uncomfortable and it's made out of this nasty fabric. And, you know, it's actually not like that at all. Here's one I made earlier uh, to show you guys. So, <clears throat> this here is a binder, one of many different styles that you can get. This one is an Underworks uh, 988, it's from Underworks 988. It's um, got compression only in the top half and all the way down, and the rest of it is just like a little vest top type thing. So, that's a fashion statement within itself. But yeah, as I said, you can get so many different types. You can get ones that only come up to here and don't have any. Um, vest type material, that's kind of like one that I'm wearing now. Uh, you can get ones that button up, you can get ones that velcro up, you can get ones in sort of vest, like an actual vest that you can wear out type thing. There's such a wide range, you couldn't even imagine how many different ones there is out there. Another thing you're wondering, or maybe wondering if you're not that clued up on it, would be who wears binders? And the answer to that is quite simple. Um, absolutely anyone who wants to give the impression of a flat chest. So that can be trans men, um, most, uh, maybe that's a sweeping statement, but a lot of trans men like to bind their chest because they feel dysphoric about it and want to give the impression of a flat chest. But that's not to say that all trans men have to wear a binder, because then that's beginning to say that boobs or breasts um, are an inherently female attribute, which they're not. That's what I'm trying to get across anyway, but that doesn't mean that you can't be dysphoric about them because if you don't feel that they're meant to be there, then you know, by all means, do what you want to make them disappear. Another type of person or group of people who might want to bind their chest are genderqueer people or non binary people, people who sit sort of outside the spectrum, um, who some days might prefer to present more masculine than feminine, or who might just feel dysphoric about their chest on a whole and wear a binder every day. But once again, just because you're genderqueer or non-binary doesn't mean that you have to wear a binder. And it doesn't mean that you have to be non-binary to wear a binder. Or any kind of trans person at all. If you want to wear a binder because you don't like your chest, you go ahead and wear one, my fellow friend. You do, you do what you like, you do you. And my third point that I wanted to make about binders is you might wonder why do people wear them? They seem pretty uncomfortable. Uh, why would you want to do that to yourself? And as I mentioned before, dysphoria is something that you feel is sort of not right about your body or yourself in general. For example, I feel very dysphoric about my voice because it's so high and feminine. Um, but people could get dysphoric about their chest, about the downstairs. Um, but you can also be dysphoric about things that aren't trans related. You could feel dysphoric about your bum or about your thighs or about your arms. It's just something that you feel should be different to suit how you feel inside. Now, something that comes along with wearing binders is knowing how to wear them safely and to ensure that you don't harm yourself and that you're doing it the safest way possible and you're not going to cause any problems in the future either. So, number one, do not use ace bandages or any sort of bandages. From what I've read, I think it's mostly American uh, people who use ace bandages. I don't even know what they are, but they're like a bandage that you, you might wrap around yourself and I'm guessing it just pulls your chest so tight towards you that you, you lose the impression of a, of, a, of a chest. But these are not made out of the same material as binders are. Binders are made from a special type of mesh which can ensure you bind safely and pretty comfortably for the most part, so please stay away from anything that isn't advertised as a binder. Second of all, when buying a binder, please make sure that you buy the correct size. Don't go too small, if you're not, you're not that small, it's not going to fit you. 
and at the same time don't go too big if you know that that's going to be too big for you because then it's not going to bind well. If you go into a website that's selling binders, they usually have a binder size and chart and you just measure yourself around, I think it's like around the, the thickest part of your chest, obviously with a binder on or, or a bra or any sort of, <coughs> excuse me, any sort of clothing on. You measure yourself around and whatever measurement that is, I think you just pick it on the chart and that's yours. When wearing a binder which is the correct size from a right website who advertises binders and it's not ace bandages, please try your very hardest not to wear them more than eight hours a day because it can get insanely uncomfortable and I mean I've experienced it and I know it's really hard to try and find the time to not wear it especially when I've had issues such as um, I've gone to uni at 10 o'clock in the morning and then I've got that till 5 and then I start with 6 and I'm there till 12 and that is a long day to have your chest compressed. If you can avoid it and if you can take it off then please do so but if you can't and there's absolutely no way you can take it off or just wear like a bag of jumper or something what I tend to do is I try and give myself like 5 minutes every 3 hours or so sitting in the toilet pulling the binder off my chest and doing some deep breaths in and out and then I try and give myself like a binder free day each week. Um, so it's usually like Sundays for me because Sundays is when I have nothing on. And I'll sit around with a baggy t-shirt and a baggy jumper and I'll just give my chest some time to breathe. Excuse the pun. <laughs> and it just releases the tension from it for a whole day and you're ready to bind again the next day. An alternative if you can't buy a binder because you live at home or you live with people who don't know that you're trans, you could buy a sports bra and that acts as a good alternative. It compresses your chest, probably not as much as you'd like it to, but um, it definitely gives you the impression of a flatter chest than had you worn a normal bra or any sort of normal top. And they're relatively cheap as well, you can get them from Sports Direct or you can get ones from Primark, you know, or eBay or Amazon, they're everywhere. But still try to follow the guidelines and not wear them for too long because they are binders so they could potentially harm you even more if you keep them on for 8 hours. I know from previous experience that binders are expensive as hell. Um, I know they are, I struggled to, to raise the funds for my very first binder which was kindly bought for me um, from donations on my GoFundMe when I first came out which was amazing and I, I can't thank um, Leah who bought me the binder enough for that, it's fantastic. But they are expensive especially for people who don't have um, a source of income. So if you can't buy one brand new there's something called the Morph Binder Scheme. And this is something where they send out a catalogue each month of binders that have been donated and you look through the catalogue and you find one that you like and one in your size and you let them know and usually you just pay for postage and I think if you can't afford the postage they might post it for free but I'm not entirely sure. Um, I will leave a link for that in the description below the video because that could be a massive help to anyone who is in need of a binder. Um, just a disclaimer, they might not be in amazing condition because they're donated um, so don't be expecting to get a brand new binder. Uh, through your door for free. That pretty much wraps up this video. Um, I can't think of much else to say. Uh, I am going to be making some sort of follow-up videos about uh, reviews of my binders. I have only bought Underworks ones so far, so I'm going to be um, reviewing my Underworks uh, full-length 988 binder, which is the one that I, I displayed earlier for you. And I'm going to be reviewing my Underworks tri-top, which I'm wearing right now. And I'm going to be telling you why I like them, why I stick with Underworks, why I haven't tried any other company just yet because Underworks works, works so well for me and what I don't like about them so much and what I wish I knew before I bought them. Alright guys, I hope this has been a help um, or even just informative for people if you didn't quite know about binders beforehand. That's about it. Alright. See you later friends. <laughs>